Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be referred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. Okay, as always, we start off with our gold daily chart, and we can see that our consolidation continues, and we can see that even though we're hitting our downtrend line here, uh, we can see, as we talked about yesterday, our wicks here at uh, 1676. So they are holding up. 20 moving average is holding up. And again, you can see the wicks here. See, see where we are. Possibly a rising three pattern here. We'll have to see if we get a breakup. But overall, we may see a breakout to the upside if we can continue to move up. But again, remember, we still have our 20 moving average here. Um, or maybe we'll come back into our range down to the lower side. We'll have to wait and see. Looking at our one hour time frame, we can see that consolidation. We can see the acceleration trying to keep us from dropping below uh, 1650. Uh, but overall, uh, price continues to move sideways. So slowly, I mean, look at that. Slowly we trudge along. Slowly we trudge along. Um, and so we'll have to see if the next move will, in fact, B up. Here we are with the euro dollar. What's good is we broke the 20 moving average and we put in a doji, so there's a potential now to make a run up here to the 50. Uh, that's a big move there, so I'm not saying that's guaranteeing going to happen, but there is a potential. When we look at this, we see that we are in a sell zone. We're above our long term moving average. And the euro, yes, the euro is in control. So as long as the euro is in control, we will see this continue to stay up here. Um, the euro is trending higher. While the dollar is basically going from side to side, the buyers did take control from what we talked about last night, but the sellers have now taken control while we're in neutral zone. So this suggests that we may go sideways as the dollar is moving up here. We and we, we get a little parallel action, we'll see price uh, kind of stay parallel, uh, go sideways until we can start to see divergence on our uh, who's in control. Here we can see the pound dollar, it did close above the 20 moving average, pulled back, and now it's testing the 20 moving average. So we would like to see this continue to move up here. We're still in our larger term range though, so uh, we're still kind of going sideways. But even with the light volume, we can kind of see on the one hour time frame that although we broke our move up here, we are below our long term moving average, but we have our 1.5529 line here that we still have drawn in here that acted as support and possibly will act about support again as we're below our long term moving average and we are in the neutral zone. Here we can see that the dollar is in control, which again is interesting because as we looked at it yesterday, we can see that the uh, pound is trending up here and the dollar is going sideways. So it's interesting to see that the dollar is in control. This tells you how low the pound must have been. But as the dollar is in control, that's why we're seeing price action move lower. Looks like the buyers want to be in control, but the sellers took control a little bit. Uh, but overall, as long as the dollar is in control and we're in a neutral zone, we may come back and test our 1.5529, see if we get a bounce, 
see if we can see on the daily the twin moving average hold up x support as we go back towards the top of our larger channel. Finally, we'll go with the dollar franc. Still have a lovely move upwards. And now, likewise, here we can see the 20 moving up holding up. We put in the inside bar here, 20 moving average holding up as support. I have a support underneath it at 8923. We are in a neutral zone. Ever fractionally, the dollar's in control. The dollar's in control. We can see a move higher. That's kind of supporting with our 20 moving average support level here. But we did get a nice move up here on the franc as the dollar continues to move sideways, but the dollar is in control. Ever fractionally, the buyers are in control, and that lines up with the support that we may be seeing being put in here by the 20 moving average. As we move to our watch list, we start off with our low volatility watch list, which is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands. Here, we're going to be watching the dollar Canadian and the dollar franc. And for our inside bar watch list, we're we'll watching today's range, Tuesday, with compared to Monday. And we have the mother load. We've got them all the dollar Canadian, the dollar franc, the dollar yen, the pound uh, dollar, the euro dollar, the Aussie dollar, the euro yen, and the pound yen. So we had a, out, uh, a, a plethora of uh, inside bars. So it'll be interesting to see if we get breakouts in the rest of the trend. We had a lot of pairs make move upwards. Um, and, and now the market breathe to digest what they saw. Will we get a continuation of that move tomorrow? So um, as we continue to talk about trading plans, we have to talk about the resources of the trading plan. And that is, in the end, you should only be trading money that you don't need. And I'll be honest with you, I violated this rule for a long time. I was trading money that I needed because I was so confident I was going to make money. And then when I lost it, you know, I had to find different ways to pay bills. So you got, you can only trade money you don't need uh, for several reasons. First of all, you got to pay bills. Second of all, trading money that you need desperately, even if you just need a little bit, will affect your emotions. Because when you start to, even if you haven't hit your risk tolerance, even if you haven't just stopped, you'll start seeing the dollar side. You'll start seeing the bills you need to pay. And you'll stop yourself out because you know you got to pay the bill. And the next thing you know, it turns around and goes where you thought it should go. So you know, there's, there's too much emotion that can come in and play when you don't uh, take the time to manage your money properly. And then your emotions come in and you make bad decisions. And your bad decisions are the ones that blow your account and not actually your trading setups. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We've got a great free five video course uh, help you frame your high probability trading setups. Hopefully, it'll give you a gauge of who we are as coaches and how we can help you on a one-to-one -one basis develop a trading plan and do a risk assessment about your capital to making sure you're only trading what you can afford to lose. If you're trading forex, get paid to trade. Rebates for your trade doesn't change your spread your trading conditions. Just spread uh, rebates for your trade. And finally, if you're looking for signals, we have those two. Find the provider who matches your tolerance, who matches your trading style. Get the signal to trade it for yourself or have it traded automatically. In the end, it doesn't make a difference if you have all these wonderful systems, indicators, or if you're in a room, if you don't put a trigger because you can't lose the money. You're trading money you can't afford to lose. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.